Hi everybody, hope today's going well for everyone. We're gonna start a new series here on our YouTube channel. Sort of, maybe we'll call it the history of solar bat sunglasses. So, like for everybody to be involved with these YouTube videos, so please go down and hit subscribe. And also the little bell icon down there, if you'll hit that, that will let you know when we're putting up new videos. Uh, as I said, we'll start out today with how we began solar bat, how this all started. Now we'll progress into uh, a s part of the series will be when I first met type things, such as uh, the first time I met Guido Hibden, uh, the first time I met Tom Mann Jr., the first time I met Aaron Martins, uh, uh, various pro staff that we've had over the years. And uh, then we'll also go into uh, probably a few stories about uh, when Solar Bat was associate sponsor of the FLW Tour uh, back in the day when the FLW Tour was uh, competing head to head with BASS. And uh, not only were we associate sponsors, but I, uh, I also fished for three years as a co angler. So we'll re, uh, relay some of those stories to you. So I think you'll find this, uh, hopefully find this to be interesting. So please, as I said, hit the subscribe and the little bell icon. So we'll start out, I guess, with me. <laughs> I, uh, I've caught my first fish when I was about five years old. Uh, my uncle took me to the river and as best as I can remember, what I caught was a rock bass. And uh, golly, I was proud of that rock bass. I brought that rock bass home and drug it all over town. I was raised in a small town of, I don't know, about six or 700 people. Uh, and I drug it around to all my aunts and uncles and, and friends and showed them that fish and was really proud of it. And then as I progressed and got a little bit older, um, really started watching fishing shows on TV. Um, the fishing show that I remember the earliest that I enjoyed watching so much was a fishing show called The Flying Fisherman with Gadabout Gaddis. And uh, through my uh, early teen years and through my teen years, uh, I would watch that show. It wasn't always on. It wasn't on every Saturday. It was kind of hit and miss, but I watched it as much as I could. And then I uh, progressed on as I got older, watching, uh, of course, Bassmaster on TV, watching Billy Westmoreland show on TV, um, Harold Inslee, um, uh, all of those shows. Um, but anyhow, I, I started becoming really interested in fishing. Uh, at about, uh, about my freshman year in high school, I became very interested in the eyes um, and decided that I wanted to pursue uh, the profession of optometry. I really decided that early in high school and followed through with that, uh, went to Indiana University School of Optometry and been an optometrist ever since. In about, I would say, 89 or 90, um, I had begun doing some tournament fishing and got much more serious about uh, reservoir fishing. Uh, grew up fishing strip pits in Southern Indiana. Uh, some of the best fishing you can ever find as far as numbers are concerned. I mean, it's pretty easy to go out on a strip pit if you know what you're doing and you get the right strip pit, you go out and catch 20 or 30 bass in an afternoon. Uh, but I started wanting a more of a challenge. So I got a uh, bass boat uh, and started doing some tournament fishing. And that's when I started realizing that how, how very important your vision was to your success in tournament fishing. So I begin to think about that. Of course, I have to wear, I wear a prescription and I tried to get some prescription glasses, which I did. 
uh, the polarization at the time was not very good in prescription glasses. Really couldn't tell a lot of difference between the prescription non-polarized and, and polarized. Uh, so I began to investigate the possibility of uh, starting a company that really built sunglasses the way fishermen needed sunglasses to be built. Um, I, I investigated what was on the market, and like I said, this is the early stages of everything. This is back in the, uh, 1990 when about the only fishing sunglass you could find anywhere was the old Bill Dance uh, fishing sunglasses. So I, I started to do the research. Not only did I start doing the research on how I could produce a better frame, a frame that would more fulfill the needs of, that a fisherman has on the water because everything else was just frames that had been in existence, just regular frames uh, that they, they put a fishing logo on the side and said, okay, these are fishing glasses. And I just felt like there, there wasn't the, the factors and the styling built into the frame and the tints in the lenses that really were what the fishermen need, needed. And I knew I was gonna have to have a pro staff uh, to lend credibility to a sunglass company. So my wife and I, Lisa, we started going to some of the major fishing tournaments. Um, namely, uh, we started going to uh, I think it was called the Superstars Tournament. It was over in Peoria, Illinois, on the Illinois River. We went to that tournament. And at about the same time, as we started investigating and watching some pros, uh, because we wanted to see which pros seemed to interact with the fans the most, which, which had the best personalities and so forth. At about the same time, uh, my cousin, good friend of mine, fishing buddy of mine, um, we had seen a show on uh, Bassmaster TV that featured uh, Tom Mann Jr. fishing for spotted bass down on Lake Lanier. And at the end of the show, it had Tom's name and phone number to call him up for a guide trip. So uh, my cousin and I, we got a hold of Tom and we went down and fished with Tom on Lake Lanier. God, well, that was a great experience. Wonderful fisherman. And uh, I mean, this guy knows spotted bass like the back of his hand. And uh, we kind of hit it off. And then uh, Tom was going to be fishing in the Superstar Tournament at Peoria the next year. And he was going to bring his wife up with him. And subsequently, my wife had went back down there with me. And her and I went out fishing with Tom one day. So he got to know my wife. And he called me up before that Superstar Tournament, and he said, hey, are you and Lisa gonna be at that Superstar Tournament? And we said, yeah, and he said, well, I'm gonna be in that tournament. And he said, my wife Peggy's coming up with me, and maybe we can get together and go out to eat. So we developed a, a good friendship there. Never said a word to Tom at all about what I was thinking about with sunglasses and so forth and so on. And then it was one December, just about maybe two years later, uh, Lisa and I went down to uh, Buford, Georgia, uh, the first part of December, went out fishing with Tom uh, a day or two, and had just like a little December vacation. And we're out there fishing on Lanier one day, and, and Tom just all of a sudden uh, starts to talk about sunglasses for fishermen. And uh, he says, you know, there's a, a new company out there, a company out there now that's gaining a lot of popularity called Oakley. And he said, I really think they're, they're designing glasses more like the fisherman needs, wrap glasses, single lens, uh, big lens, a lot of coverage from the side. But he said, they just don't do polarized. And uh, he said, we just need a good sunglasses, a good pair of sunglasses designed to fulfill the needs of a fisherman. And he just looked right at me and he said, won't you do that? And I thought, wow, I've been thinking about doing this for three years and then all of a sudden out of the clear blue, a, a well-known pro tells me 
what I need to do and why don't you do that? And I had been thinking about that all, all along, never mentioned it to him. And I said, well, I've been, then I told him, I said, I've been thinking about doing that, uh, but uh, I need some help. Will you help me? And he said, yeah, I'll help you. Let's, let's see what you can come up with. So I went to work on it, and there happened to be a company here in the United States that was producing a shield, one-piece lens, in Polarized. And uh, I contacted that company because I had no idea how to get a frame built or get lenses, Polarized lenses in and cut them and mount them and all of that. So I called that company up, and I asked them if it would be possible that I private label that shield sunglass. And they said, well, yeah, we, that sounds interesting what you've got in mind there. Uh, yeah, we'll, we could do that. So uh, they sent me some samples and uh, I got the samples. And as soon as I got the samples, uh, Lisa and I booked a flight to Buford, Georgia, to Atlanta, drove up to Buford and showed them to Tom and he tried them out, out on the water and said, you know what, I think these are gonna work. I think this is what we need. So then I made arrangements to become a, a private label uh, distributor for this company out in California, sort of to get my feet wet. And um, that was in February, I believe, when I, we made that trip down and Tom said he liked the glasses. So we progressed on then, and I really wanted a, a partner in the business so I, uh, I partnered up with a guy who had worked at Bass Pro in the past and, and actually guided for Bass Pro. And uh, he, he had actually fished BASS as well, so he knew a lot of the pros. So we went to work on lining up some pros to wear our solar bat sunglasses. Uh, and to make a long story short, that all came about in May. We finalized all of that in May. And if I remember right, the classic was in August, I believe. And uh, we went to that Bassmaster Classic. And it seems to me like there were around 50 contestants in that Bassmaster Classic. That would have been August of 1994. And when that classic started, half the field was wearing solar bat sunglasses. We had a booth at the classic, and half the guys, half of the competitors were in solar bat sunglasses. And I thought that was quite an accomplishment for a company that started in May. And in August, we had half of those pros in the biggest tournament of their life wearing solar bat sunglasses. And that was the beginning. That's how we got started. Now, one of the questions that I get asked every show I go to, I, I'll get asked this at least two or three times. How did you ever come up with the name Solar Bat and that logo, that bat with the sunglasses on? Well, we struggled with the name. Uh, I talked to uh, Tom Mann Jr., some of the other pros, and they gave me suggestions and back and forth and back and forth. But as I said, I love to fish, and I love to strip hit fish. And one thing that I don't like about strip hit fishing in the summertime, when the sun starts getting low, the bats come out. And when the bats come out, you make a cast, they'll swoop at your bait, they'll swoop at the end of your rod tip, uh, and I just I just don't like them doing that. They're just an aggravation. I remember me and my cousin was out one time, and my cousin brought a shotgun with him. He was gonna shoot one of those bats. Well, let me tell you, it's impossible to shoot a bat. I don't care how good a shot you are. They zig and zag and so much that you're not gonna shoot them. But, I told my wife one morning, we were getting ready to go to work, and I said, you know, Lisa, something just hit me. I mean, I think every fisherman and every outdoorsman in the country is aware of a bat. Not only are they aware of a bat, but they're aware of the habits of a bat in that they only come out 
in low light. They won't come out, they're not out in the middle of the day. They're only out in low light. So I said, we need to name this sunglass company something to do with a bat. And then it just hit me. Uh, we'll name it, I told her we'll name it Solar Bat. And our logo's gonna be a bat with a pair of sunglasses on. And our slogan's gonna be, now I can fly in the sun. Because people can relate to that. A bat is a nocturnal animal. And if he's got our sunglasses on, now he can fly in the sun. So I really uh, just sort of stumbled into it after about two months of brainstorming. And that's how we came up with Solar Bat. I have another, I had another cousin, he's passed away now, but he was quite an artist. He was just a very good artist. So I told him, I said, Jim, I said, here's my idea for this company. I'm gonna call it Solar Bat, and I want a bat with a pair of our shield sunglasses on, and our slogan is, now I can fly in the sun. Will you draw me up about five or six different versions of a bat with sunglasses on with the sun? And he said, yeah, I can do that. So he drew up several versions, and Lisa and I looked them over, and we picked out what you see behind me, the solar bat that's been our logo from the very start. And uh, it creates a lot of attention at shows. And uh, that's the story of how and why I started Solar Bat, how I came up with the name, and how I came up with the logo. So we appreciate everybody watching today. We hope that you will subscribe at the bottom here and hit the little bell so that when we do uh, more videos, you'll be notified. We're gonna try to do three or four videos a month. Uh, we'll try to do another video next week, probably between Christmas and New Year's, we won't get one done. But uh, right after the first of the year, then we'll, we'll start out doing more videos and right now i'm i'm thinking about the next video we do will be uh, the first time i met tom mann jr i'll give you a little a few tips about how how those guide trips went and some of the conversations we had and uh, I think you'll find that interesting as well. Tom's one of the one of the best fishermen there is in the country. He's one of the he's probably the best spotted bass fisherman in the country. And now as a guide down on Okeechobee and probably one of the best, if not the best, guides on Okeechobee. So that'll be our, our next video will be the first time I met Tom Mann Jr. So thanks for tuning in. And We'll look for you to watch more of our upcoming videos. Thank you.